Well, it's back into the woods again. It is a Thursday morning and I'm going to have a wonderful time for a little while. A few thoughts, some breakfast and a bit of a chill. It's nice to be out in this. Ah. A little bit of halloumi cheese sizzling away here. Wonderfully when you cook it over a fire. Wonderful stuff. I do also just barb kebab it over the flame sometimes. It comes out very nice. Ooh, ah, let's get on the warm side, pop that in the rubber stage, well, there you go, I'm just going to turn off and enjoy this slight breakfast. Hi, just a little bit of an update I suppose of what's been going on over the last few weeks because obviously I haven't, I've only put up a little slideshow and um, I've been away as you know on the Woodlord Journeyman course. There is a lot I can't say about the course because for anyone that will go on it, it will ruin the course. Um, there are certain aspects of the course that have to remain secret, I suppose, and we're on a bound to keep that secret. It, it is a good course. Um, one guy had an amazing piece of luck, and I find that I've learnt a lot. It's just starting to sink in a lot of it and it's a very steep learning curve as someone once said or someone has said to me that also done the course some 10 years ago I sat down and did a rough work count on how many people would have done this course over the last where, where since he started doing it and there's around 400 people that have done that have gone through the journeyman and how many completed the course is I don't know but just say for instance there are 400 people in the world that have gone through the journeyman course and it makes us pretty unique in a way it's a difficult course it's very much listening to your own body you deals a lot with uh, dehydration and food deprivation um, for three days of the course you're out with a group on your own basically with a set, set list of items that you carry with you you don't carry all your kit with you you get given a kit list for those three days and those you can only take those out and no more and um, it was very good one chap found two partridges outside his shelter that had a been got at by something but had just been just killed they weren't they weren't severely mauled they was fresh and we he made the most of those next day a pigeon flew into a tree would you believe and another amazing stroke of luck uh, ate a hedgehog road kill by the way freshly killed um, and another group had a road kill pheasant uh, eels were eaten and trout. They learnt a lot about food and foraging. Foraging is not a, oh, a five minute job out into the local woodland. It is very very hard particularly when you're deprived of a few items like carbohydrates and sugars. <clears throat> very very hard. We walk, You can walk up to five or six kilometres a day just to find something like cattails, blackberries, various forms of fungi. Um, as regards fungi, I am now confident that I can eat some. As Claudia, the mycologist on the course, said, you cannot be 99% sure with fungi, you've got to be 100% sure with fungi. And we were only allowed to take those with paws and spines, mostly hedgehog fungi and beletes, though Claudia did come round and introduce us to trumpet chanterelles and chanterelles, very tasty, though 
due to the aspect of the course we were missing the vital ingredient of butter or oil. Great course, um, it was and it's very very eye opening. Got some stuff lined up for next year. I'm going on a fire lighting techniques course which takes us beyond the bow drill and hand drill. It's only a long weekend, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, or Friday evening, Saturday and Sunday. And I've got three foraging courses lined up for next year with wood smoke. Um, these will be with coastal foraging, the spring forager and autumn harvester. Looking forward to those immensely. And one or two other things I've got lined up in the pipeline. Um, I'm going to hopefully do a few videos, not so much sort of like what I do in camp, but more foraging type, you know, or going out and looking around, seeing what there is. There is so much. Um, oh, one, one great thing, I will mention one great thing about the journeyman course, and it's something that there are quite a few of us that were having had the Mora Clipper knives, and some of these were guys that were seriously into what they do. A couple of them were professional woodsmen and professional foresters as well. And we all agreed that the clipper is a very good and useful knife. There were no knife junkies. We had sensible knives with us. In fact, we were only allowed to use our axes for two days. The rest of the week we weren't allowed due to the fact that our sugar levels were low and what could take you five minutes would take you 15 minutes. So there is that aspect of it. And so I'm hoping to do, I'm hoping to expand my sort of repertoire on videos that I do. I, I enjoy coming out here. You know, I have, I've had breakfast this morning. I've had halloumi cheese. I've had some salami and I've had duck eggs. Really nice sort of mix up. Couple of cups of tea as I normally do never far from a tea bag and it's very good um, I sat at the master himself was invited into Ray Mears' uh, tent and he told us some tales of the First Nations it was very good to be with the guy himself and I found it a wonderful experience I even had a slight one-to-one -one with him because we've um, both experienced sweat lodges and these were sweat lodges with the uh, First Nations. I think he did these with the uh, Nez Perce. I've done mine with an Anishinaabe Ojibwe, Native American. And to be at the birthplace of mankind, which is what Ken Lockerfish calls the sweat lodge is a wonderful experience. But being with Ray was was the icing on the cake for me. Um, such a modest guy and he doesn't suffer fools gladly, which is a good thing. And we had a few lectures by him as well. Um, my admiration for the guy has gone up immensely. He is he is what you see. Nothing more, nothing less. He doesn't slope off to a, a hotel at, in, at the end of the day. Um, the team itself, great, wonderful instruction. And I've learned a little bit more on dispatching, catching and dispatching animals. What I do find bizarre is now you have to take an exam to set a snare. It's only 35 quid, but it is bizarre. Um, and we covered we covered various aspects of that law as well. But all in all, I can now safely identify seven fungi, and I can live out in the backwoods for a short while with a very very minimal kit. And I'm talking three layers of clothing on top that includes your waterproof, two layers below boots, a 12 centimetre billy can, your knife, your saw, two metres of cord. 
a head torch, one set of batteries, and that's it. Or you could take your camera with you, obviously, but and that was it. Oh, and a notepad and pen. And that was it. You got you got by with that. Um, I did get ticked uh, first time ever. Pulled a little bugger off. Um, it, I, it looked like a freckle, but I thought, ah, oh, freckles don't make look like a flap. So, off that came. And great time was had by all. Made a few good friends. And sometime down the line, I hope to meet them again. For those of you that have ever considered doing a journeyman course, that have gone through the fundamental and through other courses, take it. You'll never ever regret the experience. It is something magical, even though that lot was bloody cold on the first day. It was a magical experience. And as I say, I can't take say too much about the complete course. I can give you sort of bits that I've done. It is a magical experience. Oh, by the way, the shelter building, as you've seen in my slideshow, if you if you haven't seen it, go back to the slideshow that I've done. The uh, the shelter building took us almost two days. Um, we took us a whole day to actually put the shelter up and then then part of the next day to patch up some of the holes and just get the bedding more comfortable. I would like to build a shelter around here as a demonstration but we just haven't got enough stuff. It would take me at least a day to build a shelter for one person because all we have is leaf litter and debris shelters you really got to pile on the leaf litter and it's hard work. But I have that in there now, it's all up there. It's the most important thing to go out into the woods with is that because knowledge is survival and if you haven't got it up there you can have a million gadgets in your bag if you don't know how to use the gadget, you're lost. Anyway guys, it's time for me to sign off for the day. I've rattled on for something like 11 minutes or so. Get out there, get in the woods, get out and enjoy yourself. Winter's on its way. Good time. It's nice, it's quiet. Okay, it's a bit chilly at night, but you wrap up well, wear the appropriate clothing, and you've got it made. See you down the line. Bye.